Hey guys, Nicky Skevich here with Daily Fantasy Winners. I'm absolutely thrilled to uh, be back for another uh, PGA Daily Fantasy season. Uh, we had a great end to the 2015 slate uh, in the fall. Uh, we took football season, or the rest, the beginning of the 2015-16 portion off uh, for football season, but we are back here uh, with the 2016 season. And uh, first up is the Hyundai Tournament of Champions this weekend. This is over uh, at Kapalua Plantation Course in Maui. And just want to hit a few uh, main points uh, as far as this tournament goes, uh, some details about the plantation course, and then give you some picks as well. For starting off uh, for the Kapalua Plant, uh, for the Hyundai Tournament of Champions, uh, this is only a tournament for champions of 2015, so you have to receive an invite, and there were therefore there are only 32 competitors in this field. The second thing that's uh, really important about this is there there's no cut, uh, so now you don't have to worry about any Friday sweats of your players missing the cut. If somebody uh, happens to shoot a, a 78, 79, and uh, you think uh, your lineup is, is done for, uh, he will not be done uh, heading into the weekend. Uh, everyone is guaranteed 72 holes, of course. Uh, weather and uh, with and WDs permitting. Uh, and what's really cool about this field uh, in particular this year is that uh, a lot of times, uh, I should say in previous fields, uh, a lot of the players don't end up coming out to Maui. Some of the best players do. Uh, like Tiger Woods uh, was somebody that came out to Maui in the late 90s, early 2000s. But obviously, as he continued to winning tournaments and he narrowed down his schedule, uh, he stopped coming out to Maui. So sometimes you wouldn't even get uh, uh, all the champions of the best field in the world here. Uh, this year is a little bit uh, different. A lot of the, the best players are showing up this year. Uh, there's no Rory McIlroy, but we do get Jordan Spieth, Jason Day, uh, Ricky Fowler, Dustin Johnson, uh, Bubba Watson. We're getting a lot of the top names. Zach Johnson uh, is, is going to be there as well. So we get a lot of, uh, of the top names uh, in today's golf, uh, in today's game. So it's going to be very exciting uh, to watch uh, this tournament un unfold to get us uh, started for 2016. Um, one last thing I'll say about this before I dive into the specifics of, uh, of this tournament is that while this is a tournament that does count toward uh, Ryder Cup points, uh, uh, FedEx Cup points, and is, ab uh, is part of the PGA Tour season, a lot of the players really are in a uh, relaxed mode. Uh, there's someone on vacation here. Uh, if you follow some of the the players, uh, as far as social media goes, you'll know that uh, Ricky Fowler has been hanging out in Maui pretty much th this previous week. Uh, I've seen uh, yet just yesterday, Monday, he was out uh, out on the boat with some of his buddies. Uh, they were jet skiing, surfing, doing things of that nature. Uh, Fowler was playing a few days ago at a course, uh, and they were ran out of uh, ran out of light, and they were playing glow golf at a, at a course over in Maui. I don't think it was the plantation course. So uh, they're out there having a good time. Dustin Johnson and Paulina Gretzky, they were uh, they were doing the Kapalua zip line, uh, you know, having some thrills that way. So uh, in any case, uh, the, this is uh, they're going to compete and they're going to try their best. But at the same time, this is not your usual uh, preparation for a, uh, a major championship or anything like that. So uh, it's a little bit tough. It's a little bit of variance with this, with only 32 players in the field and uh, some of the players more uh, in just uh, taking it easy this week leading up to it. But it's going to be very exciting because once Thursday rolls around, they'll be uh, very competitive and very uh, much uh, gearing up, ready to go. So uh, let's talk about Kapalua Plantation Course, where this is at. This is over on the, uh, the west side of Maui. Absolutely gorgeous place. Uh, it's a golf course that's ranked. Uh, last I looked, I remember being in the top 20 of golf courses you can play in the United States. Uh, believe it or not, it's actually a course I've been lucky enough to play uh, a few times. Uh, I've been over to Maui twice and gone to uh, play uh, 36 holes there uh, each time. So I played four 18-hole rounds there. Uh, definitely one of the, my favorite courses to play, and hopefully I can give you some good insight here. Um, the first uh, unique thing about plant the plantation course is that it's a par 73. Uh, so what does that mean? Uh, that means there is only one par 3 on the back 9, and that really doesn't change anything from a strategic standpoint. Uh, it might it would potentially change a little bit if there were three par 5s on the back 9, but since there's only one par 3 and there's still your, your, your four standard par 5s, uh, it's not going to change too much. Um, this course is uh, pretty wide open. The fairways are very friendly. Uh, this is a resort course. This is not uh, something we're driving at. A course we're driving accuracy is going to be very important. Uh, this course can also be very windy. 
Uh, although when last I looked at the weather forecast, it seems to be relatively calm for most of the week. So I don't think wind will be too much of a factor. We don't have to look at weather patterns or anything like that. Uh, it should be pretty smooth sailing. A couple of years ago, it was absolutely horrendous, and the tournament was shorn to 54 holes with all the crazy storms they had. But this year we should be in good shape. Um, but this course was designed, actually, uh, because the winds are fairly consistent there in which direction they blow. Uh, this course is designed in a way that, uh, you know, you'll see a hole that will be like a 520 yard par four, but in fact that hole's almost always playing downwind or downwind with a little bit of a cross. And then you'll turn around and see a 310 yard par four and you'll see, oh, well that, that's drivable for, uh, these guys when in fact is the wind's usually blowing uh, straight, uh, straight at them and it's uphill or something like that. So, uh, I would not look at the yardages too much uh if you don't if you've never played this course or if you haven't really done the research about it um i will try and dive into the holes that are drivable for there's a one drivable par four and uh, four uh, par fives and i'll get into here in just a second about uh which holes have eagle possibilities um in any case actually let's just do that right now uh so the first hole that is a par five that is a, an eagle possibility and it's actually the easiest to eagle on the entire golf course this is number five uh 532 yard par five this is uh if you see this picture this this picture is uh taken from behind the green looking straight back at the fifth hole and uh basically your this, this is a fairway up here is sloping le uh, pretty severely left to right it's a pretty wide fairway it is a green that pretty much any player of all distances is going to go for in two. Having said that, uh, it's only, it's yielded only, it's yielded fewer than 10 uh, eagles uh, each year of the last four years. And that's as far back as I went and looked. So you might think this is a hole that would, would yield 20 plus eagles, but it's actually under 10. Uh, and it's not like a huge eagle hole. Now there's two reasons for that. One is because uh, the pins, will, the pin placements will often be on the right hand side. It is a huge, severely sloping green, so it's not that easy. Uh, and when the pin placements here are on the right hand side of the green, uh, there is a false front that, or I shouldn't say a false front. When you when it does fall off the side of the fringe, uh, there is a, a very narrow sand trap, and then it's down into the valley, into the lateral hazard. So a lot of players will hit this green in two, but they'll be 25 feet away uh, and have a uh, a very tough uh, putt to make eagle on it. So you'll see a lot of two putt birdies here, but in any case, driving distance uh, is going to be an important factor here as well. Even though a guy like Zach Johnson, he will be able to hit the screen in two, no problem. Uh, hitting hybrid into the screen versus uh, a seven iron is a big deal here in terms of getting the proximity to the hole is where you want the eagles. Um, so this is the first par five. The second par five on the front side is number nine. Let me scroll through here. Uh, yeah, this is 521 yards. Now, you might think this is a, a very easy eagle hole. It really is not at all. Uh, I think Bubba Watson uh, eagled this. I think it might have been last year or it was a couple of years ago, and he was the only one to do so in the entire field. And the reason why this hole is very difficult to eagle is that if you look at this picture, if you can see it on here, it's a bit of a deceiving picture because this photo is also taken from behind the green. But... The fairway for the ninth hole is over here, way on, on the left-hand side of your screen. Uh, what you're seeing straight in front of you is actually the first green. So you want to look over here to the left, and the fairway ends over here, and it runs straight down into this into this gully. Uh, it's actually, I shouldn't say it's a gully, it's uh, into the thick, heavy rough. And a lot of players are going to be hitting three woods, or, or, you know, some of the shorter hitters will hit driver, but it's usually playing dead into the wind. And this second shot coming up to this green is severely uphill and playing into the wind. Uh, so believe me when I say this, you know, I know it's only 521 yards, but only the longest hitters are going to be able to hit this one and two and have a shot at an eagle uh and looking back in the last four years uh there has been there was one eagle made here last year there was three made in 2014 there were none in 2013 and only one in 2012 and uh those pretty much going to the long headers uh let's move on here to hole 14 which is actually a par four and this is the one drivable par four on the golf course and what we've got here is uh, a slight dog leg right. This picture is a little bit tough to tell how the hole is designed, but it's a slight dog leg right. And there's a bunch of sand traps over here on the right hand side. And what players like Dustin Johnson, who could honestly probably hit three wood and, and, and still be able to drive this green uh, because 
uh, it's not really, it's 305 yards if you follow along the fairway. It's probably more like a 280, 285 hole if you go directly at the green. The green, though, is extremely small, and it's extre- and it's breaking severely back to front. And going over this green is really bad news. So, in one sense, it is very difficult to eagle. There's usually only like one or two eagles here a year. But again, there are a lot of players that... You know, a lot of these players uh, are pretty much in just aggressive mode at this tournament because they're more, again, like I said, a little bit more in vacation mode. They're a little bit more relaxed. Uh, they are not uh, going to tense up maybe until, uh, you know, halfway through Sunday's round. Uh, and so you'll see a lot of players go for this green, but you'll also see a lot of players fail at hitting the screen, uh, you know, just off you know, one side or one way or the other. And it's uh, a very difficult up and down to, uh, to a very difficult up and down just to get birdie. Uh, and so in any case, you're going to, again, this is a, dr- a driving distance thing where you're going to see the Dustins, the Bubba's, Jason Day's go for this green. Uh, but really you're only going to see one or two Eagles here at the end of the day. You'll see more of the shorter hitters, uh, you know, hit their hybrids or their long irons and then just have like a full sand wedge into the green. Two more par fives on the back nine, hole 15. 555 yards. This is kind of a, a this is a really unique hole, actually. Uh, one of my favorite holes on the course. This is basically shaped like one of those uh, mini S's, if you will, in Tetris. Uh, the hole goes straight out uh, ahead of you. It cuts 90 degrees to the right downhill to about the 100-yard mark, and then it turns 90 degrees sharply to the left and goes straight uphill to the green. Uh, it's a very unique design. Uh, the longest hitters will try and cut off uh, part of this hole down the right-hand side. They'll basically hug the edge of the tree branches uh, on the right-hand side of your screen, and they will try and hit to the bottom of that hill and then hit a, a utility club, a fairway wood, up to the green. Uh, some other players will be the, maybe the smarter but definitely safer route and just go right down the middle and then play it as a, as a three-shot hole. This is uh, probably the second toughest hole to eagle as far as the par fives are concerned. Um, There have only been nine eagles here over the last four years. And so in any case, again, this is another hole where you're going to have the driving distance pay off for the eagles. And then last hole is number 18. This is one of the signatures, uh, signature holes, if not the signature hole. Uh, 663 yards. You have to be thinking there's no way like anybody can eagle this, right? Well, there is a severe amount of elevation on this golf course. This is basically built on the side of a mountain, and we are going straight down the mountain on this hole. And I played, and my average driving distance is probably about 290 to 95 yards with my driver. I can definitely hit over 300, but if we're talking about realistic averages, I'm about 290. Uh, I have hit driven. I drove this ball was back in 2010 when I was uh, pretty much when I was in college. And uh, I drove this about 340 or 350, and I was not a huge weightlifter at the time. I think somebody uh, – we there have been pros that have gone close to 400 yards here. I might stretch that a little bit with, what, from my memory. It might be more like 320, 330. But in any case, you get the idea. The players will bomb this drive. It's downwind. It's down uh, down the mountain. And this is definitely a, uh, a par 5 that can be reached in two. Um, if you remember going back a few Hyundai Tournament of Champions tournaments a, a couple of years ago, uh, Bubba Watson actually hit a driver off the deck here on his second shot. It was an, it was such an amazing play. Um, he did a classic Bubba, and he carved a, a driver off the deck that had a huge low wicked slice that ran all the way down the fairway uh, and rolled onto the putting surface and to about, I think it was about 8, 10 feet, and then he made the eagle putt, and it was pretty sweet. Uh, so in any case, again, driving distance here is important because – uh, while I do say this is a reachable par five and two at this crazy distance, uh, it's only going to be reachable for the longest hitters. So, uh, is to, we're going to cover two strategic things about this in terms of how we're going to pick golfers, and then we're going to get right into the picks. So, uh, the first thing I want to tar- uh, target here is course history. Now, personally for me, if you've seen my PGA daily fantasy articles in the past, uh, I have, said that course history is often overvalued. It is often overrated. And the reason for that is because there's quite, frankly, there's just variance when it comes to players being successful at certain golf courses. Now, there can actually be reasons for it. If a player, if if there's, if uh, a player's, game fits a certain style of golf course, then yes, there, there is reason to pick that player and why you see great 
uh, success for somebody at a specific course. But the, the, the factor alone or the concept alone that a player does well at a course for the last two or three years does not necessarily mean that he's going to do well again uh, in, in the upcoming years. There needs to be actual reasons for it. Is this player really good at driving accuracy? And is that extremely important? Is this like an older country club style course where that's where it's promoted? Um, is a, a player have a really good bunker game? And is are we playing at whistling straights or something like that where there's a million bunkers? Um, so there needs it can't just be if the fact alone that somebody has done well at a specific course. That can't be your only reason alone for why you're picking somebody. So what I'm why I'm saying course history is important for here. The grain of the grass actually grows uh, toward uh, Molokai, the island Molokai. Uh, you can see it off. Uh, I can't I can't tell if that's Lanai or if that's uh, Molokai uh, on this uh, on this picture. But there's two islands out there, and the grain of the grass grows basically toward Molokai or maybe just uh, a little to the side of it. And the reason why that is important is uh, if you play this golf course, it's absolutely crazy how much the grain affects putting. Uh, if you've ever played a mountain golf course, you'll know that putts always break toward the valley away from the mountain because it's the, the natural lay of the land and, and the way it works. And so uh, oftentimes players, when they go there their first time and they hit a, a downhill or a down grain putt, they blow it 10 feet by and then they have a, a, a putt that's into the grain, they'll leave it way short. And then obviously they'll misread it uh, when it's breaking right to left or left to right. Uh, and so I say this when it comes to tournament golf, when the greens are rolling ex uh, uh, very, uh, very quickly, uh, it's very important that you have uh, some course history here and some knowledge of playing here uh, that can definitely work out over a 72 hole sample. It's not, it's not a hundred percent, you know, guaranteed that someone that's never played in this tournament is going to do well um, by no means. Uh, Hideki Matsuyama, I believe played in it for the first time last year and he nearly won the tournament. So it's, it's not a hundred percent, but it's uh, there is definitely a strong correlation of course history here and having that knowledge. Uh, the second thing uh, I've already touched on it is the driving distance. Um, when, and this is important when it comes to the DraftKings scoring. There are only 32 golfers in this field, and you don't have to worry about a cut. So you can worry you you don't have to worry about uh, taking chances here. You don't need a balanced salary method. You're more than welcome, or I would promote actually you being a little bit more aggressive here and picking a couple stars uh, to go along with some other players, uh, you know, as well. To obviously, to fill in the salary. Uh, it's just a lot of the times I do promote a balanced salary method because it is that important to have everyone make the cut. But you don't have to worry about it here. So I'm definitely all for going for the driving distance and going for this eagle scoring because in eagle, if you guys remember, we'll take a look here at DraftKings right now and I'll just I'll bring up the scoring here very quickly. And contest rules. And computer's a little bit slow for some reason. Clicking on. All right, here we go. So in PGA, here you go. So we have eight points for an eagle, and we have three points for a birdie. A difference of five points right there. So already, and we're looking at 32 people in this field. So let's just say you have a golfer who's not playing his best, and he's going to finish 25th. He's going to get four points for finishing there. But if he can get an eagle versus somebody else that's, uh, you know, that's going to play a par five as a three-shot hole, uh, and he makes birdie, you're already looking at a five-point difference up here in that scoring. And all of a sudden, you're making up the difference of four to nine points. So all of a sudden, you're basically taking a golfer that uh, maybe shot the same score uh, or roughly the same score or whatever, and uh, you're making the difference between eighth place and 25th place already. So you can see how much an eagle and a birdie is makes such a big difference here uh, at this tournament. And this is going to be huge for you, obviously, uh, when it comes to uh, winning money here in your uh, cash or GPP lineups. So a few picks here for you guys. I'll give you some of my top picks. The first guy I'm going to recommend taking is Dustin Johnson. Uh, why I like Dustin, obviously, is a driving distance factor. Um, he's played at this tournament several times. Um, he has tied, tied for six last year. He won it the year before that. Uh, he had a tied uh, for he tied for ninth, uh, then going back to 2013, and a tie for tenth, and, and he finished eleventh. He is a 
He's got four top 11 finishes, excuse me, five top, uh, five, to, uh, five finishes of 11th or better in the last six years. So that's really good, obviously, uh, no matter, uh, no matter who you are, obviously in any field. And so, uh, Dustin Johnson, someone who has shown great course history here, he's got great length. Um, and there is enough star power here. I think with, uh, Jordan Spieth, Jason Day, uh, Dustin, Bubba, Ricky, that, I don't think you're going to find anybody that's too heavily weighted in terms of percentages. Obviously the percentages of players played is going to be higher all, all around because there's only 32 players in the field. Excuse me. But in any case, I don't think you have to worry about it in particular with Dustin. And then the second player just right below Dustin, I'll say is Bubba Watson. Bubba has been doing pretty well here. Uh, he just came off winning the hero world challenge. Um, he is somebody that's played a Kapalua quite a bit as well. Um, his success, not quite as good as Dustin's, but again, he finished 10th last year and then he uh, finished tied for fourth the year before that. Um, Bubba is extremely aggressive. And the one statistic I really do like about Bubba, if we go back to last year's stats, um, I'll pull this up here, is the going for the green statistic. This is a statistic I really like to use when it comes to uh, using guys and trying to get the, the eagle scoring. Is you look at... Um, uh, the percentage for Bubba Watson right here at number one, 76.28% of the time Bubba uh, hits the green uh, under regulation in his attempts of going for it. That is an extremely high uh, percentage. Obviously, you can see there is a huge gap between Bubba and Jason, 76.28 uh, to 69.47. And then the uh, the margins get a lot uh, a lot slimmer as, as you go down the list. So Bubba is very good at this. Uh, he will absolutely be very aggressive here uh, at Capelo and be his typical Bubba self and uh, trying to put up those red numbers. And then a couple other players. I'm going to go down to the mid-salary players. Jimmy Walker here at $8,000. He kind of trailed off at the end of the 2015 season, but Jimmy has played really well in the West Coast events. Uh historically over the last few years he always plays in the sony open he has played at the hyundai tournament of champions the last couple years uh he lost in a playoff with patrick reed uh for first place so he finished second and uh he typically does do really well at sony and he's 21st uh in driving distance so this is somebody who has experience playing in hawaii this is somebody who has played kapalua did well last year and he's also somebody i think a lot of people have quite frankly forgotten about and how good of a player he really is uh so there are a lot of reasons building up uh for jimmy walker i think eight thousand dollars quite frankly just straight up is a huge bargain and then uh lastly uh, Steven Bodich at $6,800. Uh, you're going to need to use one or two, maybe even three, if you really want to get aggressive with your lineups uh, of players around this salary. Uh, Bodich is somebody uh, that uh, played here last season, and he is tied for 18th in driving distance. Um, he's very good at going for the green as well um, and uh, is a very aggressive player. Uh, I do, and Bodich also has great history of uh, playing uh, in Hawaii as well. So I really think um, Bodich is somebody that's the best of the bunch at this price range. Uh, and as far as uh, what I was alluding to before is like somebody who, you know, maybe don't, doesn't have the best tournament finishes, you know, in the 20 to 25 range, but he gets you that eagle, uh, that scoring difference uh, will be huge. And so uh, in any case, that wraps up uh, this edition of Tea to Green here with Nikki Skevich, uh, Daily Fantasy Winners. Please like and subscribe uh, at Twitch and YouTube. And then as well, follow me at Nikki Skevich for any uh, Daily Fantasy PGA information. Uh, I tweet about all kinds of stuff in the sports world if you just want to shoot me any kinds of questions. Uh, also visit the forum at DailyFantasyWinners.com. And then, of course, we are at Twitter at DFantasyWinners. Thank you for listening.